Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the bronze bream. First of all, welcome to Kingfisher. Please consider liking and subscribing the video. If you don't like it, please let us know why. And uh, put down in the comment section what you want us to see, what you want to see next in these videos. And if we've missed anything or done something that you enjoy, please let us know. So guys, let's get to it, the bronze bream. Okay, the bronze bream, scientific name is Pachymetapon grandi. Now, Pachymetapon, obviously referring to that little bulge that it has on the head. Um, and grandi obviously refers to big and it is the biggest of its genus. That's why it's called Pachymetapon grandi. Some of the other names, Afrikaans, Pens and Dadams, uh, they're also known as uh, Copper Bream by, by some people and also known as a bluefish down more in the Eastern Cape. So these guys you get all the way from Strace Bay down, down south all the way up into Mozambique, but sort of Maputo is going to be the absolute, absolute most uh, north you're ever going to find them. And they're really more common from say KZN down south. So middle KZN down into Transkei and then down into Eastern Cape. In terms of what it looks like, now the bronze bream has got, it's a plumpish fish, quite a large, obviously the Afrikaans, pens and darams, uh, guts and stomach, if you want to translate it directly, refers to it's got, being a vegetarian, it needs a much longer gut to digest the food. Because plants actually, they, Plants have evolved to be very, very tough and difficult to digest. They've got um, hard uh, chitinous layers and all sorts on the outside, so it makes it, and a lot of fibers in them that makes it very difficult to, to actually get the nutrients out of the plant. So the bronze room needs a much longer gut to be able to actually digest or get enough material out of the, the plant that it eats. So that long gut obviously has to go somewhere and that's in the stomach cavity. So if you've ever gutted a bronze room, you'll see it's got an extremely long um, intestine, very, very long. So that's just to facilitate more, a longer digestive process so it can get more stuff out of the actual plant. Now, being a herbivore, they've got uh, grazing incisors on, the, on their jaws themselves. They're actually quite sharp. Uh, they do sometimes bite you off. It's why we generally use either a doubled section of line above the hook or use something like a fluorocarbon or a maxima that's a little bit harder than your standard nylons. Now, otherwise they've got fairly small eyes for their body size, uh, a smallish mouth, and um, the overall sort of browny color, but they go silver after they've, uh, after they've died or if they over sand a lot, so it's silver. They've got a little bit of bluing on their cheeks, which is where they get the blue fish name. And um, that's, yeah, that down in the Eastern Cape, they've got a, they've more of that than it is up here. Yeah, it's generally a more coppery color, obviously, where you get copper bream, um, all the way to like a browny sort of color to them. Now, obviously, very large stomach cavity, so they're, they're quite rounded, overly shaped. And uh, yeah, they've got quite a big tail for their size. They operate in very shallow water. So that big tail helps them to be able to keep their head down while they're grazing and still be able to push themselves down into the rock that they can actually chew off. And when the water current is surging around, it helps them to be able to move in there. Because obviously if they've got this tiny little tail, they're just gonna get pushed around all over the place. So that brings us to where you're gonna find them and what to look for when, you, when you're fishing for bronze beam. Now, in my experience, bronze beam can be extremely pedantic about where they, where they feed. You can have a single boulder out in the sea. If you're casting to that, if you land on the right-hand side, you don't get a bite. You land on the left-hand side, you don't get a bite. You land in the middle, not on the boulder, but just next to it, you get a fish. I've seen this too many times that because you don't fish in the exact right spot, you don't get that fish, or at least you don't get consistent bites. Now, that's why we use the tackle that we do, which we'll see in the link that we've done on the the previous videos, the actual tackle itself that we use, that you cannot, it's not heavy to just go and cast in one spot and stay there. It's light, it's maneuverable, it's easy to cast. So you can flick to that side, okay, nothing happening, nothing happening. Wind in, cast to that side, nothing happening, cast to the middle, nothing happening, cast over the back, on. So you, it's all about experimentation, it's actually choosing the spots and flick, fishing very accurately to them. So, surf zone, number one, uh, rock, Generally, you need rock. You do catch them over sand by themselves, but it's very, normally around rock. And then places that have got a lot of seaweed. So because they feed on that seaweed, you're gonna to wanna to fish in the seaweed, obviously. Now, bait for them. There are a whole lot of different baits, but pink and red prawn and crayfish are your three top baits that you're gonna use for them. We've caught them on sardine, 
We've caught them on uh, stuff like red bait, Oki tentacles, chocker, it's all, all sorts, but prawn and crustaceans of sort are your best, best bet. So, simple traces that we've got made up, Ray's done those. Nice, chunky piece of prawn. The guys too often say you must use this thin little strip of prawn, nice, delicate little presentation. Bronze Room doesn't want that. If you get that subtle bite with that, if you put two prawns together on one hook, make a nice, chunky, meaty bait, he floors you, normally, normally. And that's the biggest tip that I can give you guys is accuracy in your fishing and bigger baits. So two prawns on a hook instead of just one. Make it a nice chunky bait. When to catch them? It's winter at the moment now. It's coming into bronze bream season. They spawning in January through to June. So earlier part of the year. So we're getting to the end of that now. Um, but it's still, it's still very easy to target them now. And you're fishing in amongst the rocks. That's really, really all you need to know about that. Uh, in terms of sizing, you allow two per person per day and they have to be a minimum of 30 centimeters. So that's to the total length to the end of the tail. Other than that, they are very resident. So they don't move a lot. It's not a migratory species. They're gonna stay in their home sort of waters. So it is a fish that's very sensitive to over, over exploitation. It's not something that you wanna go target heavily and fish one spot and remove all the fish out of because it's not gonna get replaced. Um, that being said, they are endemic as well, so you only find them in, uh, in our waters. You don't find them anywhere else in the world. So we need to look after them, they're our stock, so it's our job to actually protect these species. And being resident, they then obviously do well in marine protected areas. If you're protecting the zone that it's living in, they're going to flourish and overflow into the areas around them, so you get spillover happening. Uh, maximum size is 65 centimeters. They get to over five kilos. I think about five and a half is the biggest I've ever heard of. And that fish at, at 65 is gonna be about 30 to 40 years old, about 35, say 35, 38 years old. So very, very slow growing fish. Um, one of those that you obviously would rather consider targeting something like a shad that grows a lot quicker, or even a garrick or something like that, as opposed to going for a slow growing reef fish like a bronze reef. So yeah, guys, Pachymetapon Grundy. It's a beautiful species that comes by a whole lot, well, goes by a whole lot of different names. And yeah, just a very fun fish to catch, nice to, to target on the light tackle, and delicious eating if you ever do want to keep them. And if you do, consider keeping less, not more. Thanks guys. Cheers.